Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about one of the cringiest, if not the cringiest, dynasties in the world, the Habsburgs. Honestly, if it weren't for the Habsburgs, we'd be missing out on a lot because, at the very least, we wouldn't have anyone this perfect to gossip about behind their backs a century later. So, despite the fact that these people treated each other in ways that were utterly bonkers, at least during certain historical periods, I think we should forgive them, otherwise we wouldn't have this delightful video today. And science, particularly genetics, wouldn't have such an intriguing case study. The Habsburgs went down in history not just as one of the longest reigning dynasties. The Tudors, by comparison, look like a tiny sneeze. They ruled Spain for over two centuries. Why they eventually stopped ruling it is exactly what we're going to discuss today. As for Austria, they were in charge from 1282 until 1918. And not just as emperors, because Austria was part of the Holy Roman Empire, the Austrian Empire, Austro-Hungary and the German Confederation, only becoming a fully independent state in the mid-20th century, in the 1950s. So yes, Austria had the pleasure of gazing upon the Habsburgs longer than anyone else. Whether to envy them for that or offer them some moral support is up for debate. As I've mentioned, this dynasty didn't just rule Austria from the imperial throne. They were dukes and duchesses too. But still, despite everything that went on within this dynasty, it was as resilient as a cockroach, which, according to popular science, can live for six to nine days without a head. Sometimes it seems that the Habsburgs weren't too far off in that department. By the way, the Archduke of Austria, Franz Ferdinand, whose assassination in Sarajevo is said to have sparked the First World War, was also a member of the Habsburg royal house. His death marked the end of this dynasty's era of dominance. But why do the Habsburgs have such a peculiar reputation? Why are there so many videos about them, including mine? Well, it's because the Habsburgs, unwilling to share their wealth, started marrying not just their cousins – second cousins are hardly worth mentioning – but even their uncles and nieces. That's what greed and the refusal to share with other dynasties lead to. Take the Spanish king Charles II, known as the Bewitched, who was practically the crown jewel of inbreeding among his many ancestors. There were even legends about him, claiming he drank the blood of commoners just to stay alive. And it's fair to say his life was far from easy, as he was a walking embodiment of a collection of genetic defects. Though walking might be a bit generous, many researchers suggest that Charles II couldn't speak until he was about four or five years old, simply because it was physically difficult for him, and he couldn't walk until he was around six or eight years old. Again, this was all due to numerous inherited defects. Charles II couldn't speak, not because no one bothered to ask how he was doing, but because he was the proud owner of the so-called Habsburg jaw. This inherited defect, also known as the Habsburg lip, is characterised by a severely protruding lower jaw. As we'll see later when we take a closer look at the portraits of this dynasty, many Habsburgs had this little quirk, a prominently jutting lower jaw found in both men and women. But in the case of Charles II, the bewitched, this facial feature reached industrial proportions. He couldn't speak properly or even eat normally. He was unable to chew his food and ended up swallowing it whole, which meant his diet largely consisted of liquid food. As I mentioned, the Habsburg lip wasn't exclusive to Charles. It was also a feature of his father, Philip IV, his mother, Mariana of Austria, and his grandparents on both sides. But it was most pronounced in ancestors and relatives like his father, Philip IV, already mentioned, Charles V, Ferdinand III, Leopold I, and Archduke Charles II of Austria. In fact, if you take a closer look at any portraits of this dynasty, especially those painted in the 16th and 17th centuries, you'll see this defect on nearly every Habsburg. Sometimes it even seems like they weren't trying to preserve the dynasty, but rather breed some sort of human English bulldogs. 
As I've already said, the cause of these facial defects, and many others too, was the sheer number of marriages between close relatives among Charles II's ancestors and other relatives. So, let's take a look at his family tree, where even Mother Nature herself finally said, enough is enough. I'll do my best to describe all this cringe in detail, though it might get a bit confusing at times. That's not my fault. It's entirely down to the Habsburgs. Things were a mess right from the start. Charles II's parents were uncle and niece, meaning that the grandmother of the last Spanish Habsburg king was also his aunt, as she was his father's sister. His father, Philip IV, was the product of a marriage between first cousins once removed. As for Charles II's mother, Mariana of Austria, she was the child of first cousins. His maternal grandfather, Ferdinand III, Mariana's father, was also born from a first cousin marriage. His maternal great-grandfather, Ferdinand II, was the product of a union between uncle and niece, just like his paternal grandfather, Philip III, and his paternal great-grandmother, the child of first cousins. After hearing all that, it stopped seeming strange altogether. And there you have it, my friends. A nauseating yet far from complete picture, because we're only talking about the period between the 16th and 17th centuries. In one study, which you can find online under the charming title Royal Marriages as Incestuous Human Laboratories, The Case of the Habsburg Dynasty, Spanish researchers analysed 73 marriages from this dynasty between 1450 and 1750. They concluded that the Austrian branch, not the Spanish one to which Charles II belonged, was the most polluted by these incestuous unions. However, let's not forget that Charles II, the Bewitched, was the offspring of a union between the Spanish and Austrian branches, so nature really went all out on him. So, from the mid-15th to the mid-18th century, the Habsburgs racked up four marriages between uncle and niece, including the parents of our dear Charles. Eleven marriages between first cousins, four marriages between second cousins once removed, one marriage between fourth cousins, practically a picture of health by their standards. Something must have gone wrong for them not to find anyone closer. And 53 marriages between second cousins. Thanks to this impressive collection of close relative marriages, the Habsburgs became the proud owners not just of the Habsburg jaw, but of other delightful genetic defects like epilepsy, intellectual disability, infertility and more. As I've mentioned, Charles II, the Bewitched, was the crowning glory of all these inbred unions. Born in 1661, he became King of Spain at the tender age of three after his father, Philip IV, kicked the bucket. Charles was the last of the Spanish Habsburgs, and his reign was marked by a string of problems, both internal and external. He was unable to have children, which led to the War of Spanish Succession after his death in 1700. Charles II was so weak and sickly that his reign was essentially managed by his mother and various advisers. He suffered from a laundry list of physical and mental issues, including epilepsy, intellectual disability and infertility. His health was so dire that he couldn't govern the country on his own, and his reign was plagued by crises and conflicts. In conclusion, the Habsburg dynasty, despite its long rule and significant influence on European history, is also infamous for its numerous incestuous marriages and the genetic defects that came with them. Charles II, the Bewitched, stands as a prime example of the consequences of such marriages, with his reign being riddled with problems and crises. Nevertheless, the story of the Habsburgs remains one of the most fascinating and instructive tales in European history.